Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to WCS America Round of 16. Today is the final day, a bittersweet moment in that uh, we've had some awesome StarCraft this week, some awesome players live in studio. Um, but it's, it's going to end today as far as the Round of 16 is concerned. That's right. Today's the final day of the Round of 16. Of course, so far, we've seen six players advance to the playoffs. Of course, it's going to be eight players in the playoffs today. We'll find out two more players to join those six. Exactly, of course. It's, it's a little bit interesting. We start off uh, with three Protosses and three Zergs advancing on. And the group today involves three Terrans. Now, it's important to note Violet was originally in this group, but uh, some visa issues arose, uh, unfortunately, so he will not be able to play today and will be forfeiting his matches. He'll be playing in the Challenger League. So what that means for us is that Alive is given the walkover over Violet for match number one. So he's going to advance on into the winner's match. And now our first match of the night is going to be Polt versus Ryung, where the winner will advance to play Alive. And honestly, coming into today, a lot of people are like, oh, Terrans, but I'm actually really excited for today. Like, TBT, first of all, is a matchup that is is is, is so, it's it's, I'm trying to compare it to Wings Liberty as far as Heart of the Storm is concerned, but I've been enjoying it a lot recently from what I've been able to see. And these are like the three of the best Terran players out there right now. They absolutely are. Of course, the first match, Polt versus Young. Polt's one of the guys that everyone was talking about as this tournament started. He's He's been in the United States for, for quite a while. He has a lot of experience uh, playing in, in non-Korean tournaments, but he also has that experience being a, a top player from, from Korea. And he's been absolutely dominant in Heart of the Swarm so far, most notably in Terran vs. Zerg, like you said in that interview. Yeah. But, of course, he's an absolute monster in all three matchups. Yeah, Polt obviously uh, also moved over to America uh, to attend the University of Texas. So he's one of those Korean players that kind of broke away from that Korean practice environment, but now he's focused. He's in Texas. It's interesting. I wonder like how travel kind of affects that. It's similar time zones as far as central to eastern. So we'll have to see how he does today. Of course, he's going up against Ryung, and Ryung is... He's, he's really good. On Team Axiom, uh, one of the best, uh, TBT is one of his best matches. We can see the percentages there. 64% TBT, 51% TVP, and of course, 62% uh, TVZ. So I feel like Ryung might be very confident coming into today's group. He has to be happy. He's in a Terran heavy group. Of course, this is a guy who's absolutely amazing in Terran Mirror. I mean, he's he's placed very highly in, in the GSL, GSL in the past, and a lot of that his, his success and failure has come down to who he faces in the brackets. If he gets a Terran heavy bracket going forward, he usually does absolutely amazing. Of course, some terms he's been knocked out earlier if he doesn't get the, enough of the Terran Mirror matchup. So right here, he's going to be happy in, in, in the fact that he has all Terrans, but they're also world-class Terrans. So I, I think this going into this, this might have been the hardest group in the round of 16. Uh, and even with Vibe dropping out, it's still an insanely tough group. But game number one is going to be an Aklan Waste. Let's get started. Players already countdown has begun. Polt versus Ryung, your first match of the night. Game one on Akalon Wastes starts right now. Of course, this map is a map where it's fairly easy to take your fourth base. TBT on this map, drop play can be pretty important, uh, especially when you're talking about the back of the third, the main, there's that kind of air passageway along the bottom and top of the map that can be used extensively. All right, here we are in game number one. In the bottom right-hand location, we have the red Terran player representing CM Storm, moved all the way from Korea to Texas to attend the University of Texas and work on his English. He is Polt. There he is. It's a little bit of a, a stormier day here in New York City. It was. I know you've uh, made your... Uh, your, your journey through the floodwaters to Wendy's earlier today. Hopefully, there was, uh, hopefully that went okay for you. It did. There was a flood warning, but uh, I was lucky enough to Luckily, be we're on the 32nd floor. <laughs> 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 of course, uh, Bolt's opponent in the top left-hand location representing Team Axiom. He is Ryung. Ryung, such an amazing Terran vs. Terran player. I'm super excited because... Paul is, is just good at everything. His, his macro is excellent. His, his game sense is excellent. I think what characterizes Paul uh, to a high level is his engagements. He's not a guy who just macros up a huge army and, and sometimes a little bit sloppy with it. He almost always has very strong engagements. He's just overall an exceptional player. Now, a little bit of background as far as how these players got here. Again, this is a round of 16, so these players had to go through round of 32 groups. Polt was first in his group involving Revival, Ghost User, and Idra. A lot of people might remember, uh, I think it was game one against Idra, 
uh, that had all the controversy behind it. But Polt getting out of that group without dropping a single map. And of course, Young ended up getting second in his round of 32 group. Uh, defeated Hello Kitty 2 to 0, then fell to Suppy 0 oh, 2, and then defeated Hello Kitty again. 2-0. to zero. So, interesting in the sense that neither of these two players have played a TVT yet in this tournament. So, uh, you know, we don't necessarily know where exactly they stand as far as the matchup is concerned, but as, as we heard in the pregame interviews, both players very confident. Pult a little bit lesser so. He said it was about 50-50 in the matchup, but anything can definitely happen here today. Also, one thing to note is that Scarlet has, has said before that Ryung is currently the strongest player in the Axiom Acer team house over there in Korea. So, mm. Definitely uh, a player that a lot of people who practice with him are very scared of. An exceptional talent, uh, and especially in TVT, is, is absolutely amazing. We can see here Pult opening up with a fast expansion, getting that command center right after starting to react around the barracks. It looks like Ryung is going to do basically the exact same build. Yeah, it seems like uh, Ryung's build is a little bit more delayed than his opponent. Uh, he I started think he gas a little bit earlier. Oh, okay, that's what it was. And I think he got an extra marine out, maybe. It does look like he did. He yep. got three Marines as opposed to two. Not a huge deal. Again, these guys doing you know economic focus spells at this point in time, taking those very fast natural expansions. And again, Akalon Waste is the map where most players are going to come into this map thinking, okay, let's let's take some expansions. It's it's one of the maps that's more most receptive to that type of play. Now the question from here is going to be, all right, are they going to start incorporating you know Hellbat drops? Are we going to see Widowmine drops? Are we going to see some you know straight up Helling drops into Cloak Banshees or something like that? Uh, because now they're going to start making their decisions as far as you know, are they going to tech a little bit more or are they going to you know add on even a third command center? So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. We could see an interesting conflict of styles because. Uh, Pole is a guy who really loves playing Bio. He really doesn't play Mech very often in, in the mirror matchup. He's, he's gone out and said that he thinks at a theoretical level, Mech may be the, the stronger option if everything's done perfectly, but he much prefers the mobility play of Bio, and, and as, long as, as long as obviously no one's perfect, it's still a very, very valid strategy, and he loves using that. On the other hand, a lot of the top players over in, in, the, in the environment in Korea have been going Mech and TVT, and Ryong, heavily used mech even in Wings of Liberty, where it's slightly less popular. So I, I think we're likely to see a mech versus bio situation. Starting to see scans going down. Uh, Pult scanning his opponent's starport and barracks, it looks like. Um, so I, I, based on that, he's able to know pretty much exactly what's going on. Of course, seeing no add-ons onto that starport. We're going to have a medevac in production here for a young. Meanwhile, Pult's starport is about to finish, and he has two Widow Mines popping out of the field. Actually, both players have two Widow Mines coming out. So again, very similar builds from both guys. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Pult begin a medevac fairly soon, considering that starport just finished. He's actually supply blocked a little bit. So uh, both these players, again, going for similar strategies. This is, this is a very interesting, uh, that the strategies are this similar, Gosh. even at the seven minute mark in TVT. This is something that, you know, TVT, there's so many different openings, you don't always see this, but both these players are like, okay, Widow Mines are really good, Medivacs are really good, this is the most optimal opening as far as, it's not very expensive, you don't have to research like Banshee Cloak, you're not risking too many units, and the Widow Mine, even if your opponent is ready for it, as long as you're quick at pulling back, you can just burrow it somewhere, it's going to be great scouting in the mid game, and your opponent has to use a scan to get rid of it. At this point in time, Pult setting up uh, a little bit more defensively here. He has a Widow Mine in his Mineral Line back there, also a Widow Mine in his main base, burned on the ground. So he realized that this is uh, exactly what his opponent is doing, the Medivac coming forward here from Ryung, and it might be right in range of that Widow Mine. Yes, it should be. It is a lot of damage being done to that Medivac, and Ryung going to soak it up. Drop the Widow Mine, taking down one SCV, but Pult wisely pulling those SCVs from that Mineral Line. Oh, I think he's got that medevac pinned on the right side of the map as well. So as soon as his Viking comes out, he can go and take that out. And that's going to be a nice win for Pult. Now, I'm wondering if he's going to try to scan this Widow Mine. Uh-oh, medevac is going to try to jet into the natural expansion, taken down immediately by those Marines. That Widow Mine getting taken out. The Widow Mine, I think, is still there in the natural. Uh, oh, it's about to hit Behind Pult. Where's the scan? Oh, the missile turret will finish. Uh -oh. Will it finish? Oh, it's going to be so close. Uh Oh, the other one! Oh, the other one! My God, <laughs> <laughs> that you don't see that every day, dude. That was down to the wire. I honestly feel the Marines might not have killed in time. Actually, might have yeah. gotten the shot off just in time if, uh, if the other one of mine didn't help out. So going forward, uh, you know, Pult maybe dealt with that with it. So he's coming out with a very slight advantage. But Ryung, yeah. uh, you know, both players going for the third command centers. Ryung uh, is actually going bio, so he's not going Mac, uh, which I, I thought he he might choose that. We're gonna see bio versus bio here. Pull it with faster uh, upgrade timing, faster sim timing, and that's because he didn't invest in the early medevac to try any harass. 
Well, I, I, well, I think he invested into it, but I don't, I don't think he actually moved it across the map. Uh, it's oh, yes. just now going across the map right now. Remember, we had a, a pretty significant supply block there for Paul, which, again, I think kind of forced him to play a little bit more defensively in the early stages. But now, sitting that medevac to the top left-hand side of the map, Ryung has a bunch of units in his main base. He's got some Marines, got some tanks. Sees it right now. Let's see how he reacts. Oh, Paul pulls back very quickly. He's going to try to land a Widowmon. Realizes it probably wouldn't get burrowed in time. The units would take it out. One thing I think that's really important to point out here is Ryong, look at how almost all of his army is in the main base because he realizes that's where a, a drop is likely to hit. Yes. But at the same time, he just has the one Marine in front of his natural so that if Polt did a frontal invasion, he would have that warning time to, to get back to the front and, and defend, which is very important. You always want to have vision in front of your base, but it also cover the drop as well. Ryung also just scanned, identified his opponent's third command center, and saw two additional barracks. So knows the intentions of his opponent going for bio. Medivac running into two medivacs, and it run out of there straight away. And, you know, uh, fairly standard stuff happening here. No player able to get a, a ridiculous lead at this point in the game, but I might give a slight tiny edge. Um, well, uh, Ryung has a spy at 90 to 94, but it, it's a slight tiny edge to default as far as, you know, upgrades, I guess. I mean, he does have a little bit of an upgrade advantage. Yeah. Plus one is almost done. Uh, he also, interesting enough, he has, this is a pseudo advantage, uh, at least for now. He only has one tech lab barrack, so he can produce some marines at a faster rate. Of course, uh, I mean, his, his combat shield is going to be a little bit later, his stim is a little faster. Ryung, on the other hand, once he finishes those two upgrades, the stim and the combat shield, he can switch those barracks to factory, potentially, you can make use of that tech lab. And the reason why I say the tech lab is not as useful on the barracks is, uh, if it's if it's bio versus bio, Marauders really don't have a place in, in that matchup. Marines, of course, are just better than Marauders uh, in, in that situation. So you really ideally have mostly reactors on your barracks. Tech Lab, of course, mainly used to obviously get that stim upgrade, um, which has completed here for Paul 3 Young, still working on that. Um, but we'll see what happens from here. I mean, Akalon Waste, it's a little bit narrow in the middle, so you have to be very careful with positioning. I love how Polt is sending out a Widow Mine, just trying to take a little bit of map control here, truly be able to identify exactly where his opponent is moving, and you have that Widow Mine there. So you're likely either going to get a kill or, like, force a scan, but um, if Ryung is able to predict that that Widow Mine is there, I'll be very surprised indeed. Marine on Marine battle there. Looks like Ryung going to get the better edge of that, and he's going to start approaching the bottom side of the map here, looking like he wants to be aggressive. He's going around at Widow Mine. He might go back and kill. Of course, uh, a Marine ran into it earlier. Uh, so he's going to take it out. But that's so efficient, like you said. I mean, it, it killed one Marine and it used a scan. Of course, Widow Mines are very cheap, very worthwhile to, to throw them out there if you already have them oh. in your build anyway. Spot the other one, that Viking, getting taken down. Marine coming forward from Ryung. Well, we'll see if he takes that out. going to be scanning his opponent's army composition. Sees the Widow Mine there. Polt's going to try to engage her again. This is kind of okay because his opponent isn't, uh, isn't sieged up, so he's going to just poke forward and then back away. He has those medevacs to heal up his marines. As long as he doesn't lose too much, and as long as he doesn't stick around to absorb that, <laughs> obviously, the siege tank shots once Ryung gets those uh, those tanks deployed. Of course, Ryung is trying to get a really good position where he can cut off Polt from his own third base can't quite get in that sweet spot. If he could have his units where Pult's units are right now, then he would really yeah. be able to attack uh, and, uh, any base and really limit Pult to maybe at most three bases and set up a really nice contain. Yeah, it's a really cool move from Pult there, realizing that that might be a threat. So really having a forward position on the map to try to prevent that that uh, that contain, that location from getting set up from Ryung. But we might have a pretty major engagement here. Both players have a lot of tanks in play. Ryung trying to identify exactly where his opponent's tanks are, sending those three Marines over to the right-hand side, and now he knows going to be edging forward ever so slightly. You don't want to overextend because then your opponent obviously can get those tank shots off on you before your tanks can get off on him. What he's trying to do, he's trying to basically control this passageway so Pult's tanks can't move any closer. And if he can keep edging forward and edging forward, he can then start doing drops in the back of the third base from Pult, and Pult will have a very hard time reacting to them. All right, it uh, should be interesting to see the fourth base timings. I mean, you know, we're essentially approaching a kind of a split map situation. It's so hard to commit yourself to trying to enter that no man's land because, you know, whoever goes there first, they're going to take those, those siege tank shots. So it looks like Polt actually swinging around the north side of the map here. Let's see if Ryan can identify this. I think he may have. He's starting to pull his units oh. back as well. He's scanned the army, wondering where the Marines are. 
this is so dangerous. This is all about positioning. Ryung has to decide, okay, do I back up and deal with this, or do I consider myself having an advantage? He's There's gonna, no Marines on a tank, on, on a Guardian he's gonna, tanks. He's dropping on top of the tanks right now. Pult coming in from the north and going to be retreating, but the Marines getting on top of the tanks there. Again, Ryung trying to take advantage of the splash damage that the tanks give to each other. Nice heads up move there by Ryung. He just took out, I think, three tanks with just eight Marines. A very cost efficient trade. And, and, and he parried. Oh, Pult's going in. Oh, he's going in. A great concave here from Pult trying to, try to split up those units and Ryun coming in with his Marines as well, so it looks like he should be able to shove this off. Holt thought he saw an opening there, but Ryun holding strong. Ryun's positioning in games is just so good in this matchup. You can see why he's called the Terran versus Terran Sniper. As soon as his opponent makes a small positional mistake, he'll take advantage, and now he's trying to seize a greater advantage by pushing even closer to third base of Holt. Marines coming forward here from Ryun, trying to split up those units, targeting down those tanks. Holt scrambling to get the reinforcements forward, but it's such a tricky situation here. Again, TBT, if you're deciding if you're deciding to run forward with your Marines, again, you're willing to lose a lot of them to those tank shots. But Ryung just trying to trade a little bit cost efficiently, sending a drop into his opponent's third base here, trying to get some damage done to the economy of his opponent, or just trying to throw Pult off guard a little bit, making him have to worry about using additional actions to help deal with that. So, um, you know, Ryung uh, playing this very well so far. Notice how he focused that sensor tower first with that drop, knowing that if he killed that sensor tower, his opponent wouldn't be able to keep tabs on his army and he had to burn a lot more scans, or he wouldn't be able to spot the drop coming back. Another drop happening. One Marine getting toasted right when he lands on the ground of Akalon Waste, so he's going to back out of there immediately. Nice move there from Polt, setting up the tank there, but Polt identifying his opponent is on sheets. He's stimming forward. He's trying to take advantage. He's realizing that, okay, he's he's in a bit of a, a bit of a bind here because he lost a lot of tanks earlier, trying to catch back up there in that regard. Speaking of which, units tab shows 8 to 8 as far as the tank count is concerned, but 79 to 54 in favor for Young as far as Marines are concerned. And interestingly enough, it's 85 to 64 as far as workers are concerned. So a 20 worker lead here for Young. Ryung really had, basically had in every measure right now. Of course, they're, they're both maxed out, and Pult's catching up in that Marine count as his most recent production wave kicked in. But Ryung has a greater position as well. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Pult's very well defended. He's got sensor towers and turrets everywhere. Uh, and neither player is really making a significant mistake. Every time Pult's made a minor mistake, Ryung's taken advantage, but it hasn't been uh -oh. enough. Trying to get a volley off across that ridge, and he is successful. Ryung able, unable to identify that that was happening. Great heads up move there from Pult. Uh, but again, that drop heading on the, on the right-hand side there, going to be heading toward that fourth base. We'll definitely keep an eye on that. Ryung, again, just trying to throw Pult off guard a little bit, trying to get some damage on the economy. But we might have another major engagement here. Pult coming forward to the top side of the map. The tank's being sieged. There's the drop at the fourth base. Let's see if Pult reacts. No, he's just standing true in the middle of the map, and he's going to just run those SUVs away. Great heads up play by Polter. He's got to be oh. counter dropping of his own. Dropping a lot of Marines in, opponent, in his opponent's natural expansion. Ryung scrambling to deal with that, bringing a lot of Marines and a tank back. So he definitely saw this coming, and Pult is going to be shoved away. Actually heading straight for that fourth, but one of the medevacs full of Marines was taken out there. So again, Ryung identifying that, taking down one of the medevacs, and now Pult with not as many Marines left to do this harassment. And <laughs> Ryung's dropped in so much damage, it actually killed several tanks, as well as SCVs and Marines. So wow. very, very nice play by him. Defending Pult's more significant drop as well. Uh, Pult is down to 40, 52 Marines to his opponent, 69. He was actually down to like 30 Marines, but a, a big production of Marines just popped out. So, um, you know, it, it's very important to watch how these skirmishes happen. The, the biggest count might be the tank count, but it, it's kind of tricky because if your opponent just has an overwhelming amount of Marines, they're able to split efficiently, get cost efficient trades as far as taking out those tanks. You know, he's definitely going to be happy about that. So we have to watch out for how Ryung decides to take advantage of the superior Marine count. Ryung also has about 20 SCVs over his opponents. So while his army right now is slightly smaller, yes. he does have the advantage of a lot more income. We can see that his his uh, resources being banked up are much, much larger than Pulse. So over the past like 30 seconds or so, Pult had an upgrade advantage, having 3-3, his opponent not having that. But just now, that upgrade completed for Ryung. So no such uh, upgrade advantage exists now for either player. They're pretty much completely even. A very, very close game here. Pull with a four position, but Ryung defending well and, and basically taking the bottom left hand side of the map a fifth base faster than his opponent. You know, that's, that's a great move. I mean, the TVT is so important as, it, as the map goes along to really take those bases as fast as possible, and more importantly, protect them. Pult identifying this, he's going to be swinging an army to the left-hand side of the map. 
I guess trying to take his opponent off guard, but Ryung is, is definitely prepared, backing up as well. Also, look out for the placement of sensor turrets for these guys. We can already see a few of them going down. Would not be surprised to see them add more. And now we're getting a lot of resources out for both of these two players. Do you see them going for any sort of transition sometime soon? You know, they're both going Mac. You'd see uh, probably a sky transition, but as this map has fairly spread out, if you invest too much money in, into Sky, it's hard to have a very strong defensive line that can defend five bases. So both players don't want to invest in tech too much as they're still fighting to get that fifth and sixth base. We are throwing away some SCVs. Do not worry, guys at home. Uh, that's definitely on purpose. As you get more over commands, you need less SCVs. But looks like Holt wants to engage here, splitting up those Marines, trying to get a cost-efficient engagement. But for Young, with a lot of tanks doing a lot of damage there to those Marines. So Holt going to back away these guys, just trading blows here. But uh, neither player able to make a lot of, you know, convincing moves. Ryung just slightly ahead, but Pult's pushing forward now. A lot of trades on, on both sides, but as long as the trades are relatively even, it favors Ryung. This and is this is the important part right here. It is. Oh, if he gets that orbital, that could be huge. Prepare. I think he's a little distracted because he's pushing on the other side as well. Just moving units around. Oh. Ryung's going to try to follow it here, but you can't drop. I don't want to drop Marines over that Chasm. Um, but again, th this is so important because, again, it's denying this fourth base. Meanwhile, Ryung, he's on four bases. He's been on four bases. He's setting up those siege tanks to protect those important paths. Paul needs to still be a little bit better about making sure these additional expansions stay alive, or Ryung, he's just going to take a ridiculous economic lead. Paul's been trading pretty efficiently uh, yeah. as far as these tank marine count wars go, but Ryung still has an economic advantage. Even uh, putting up a sensor tower behind his tank line, that's a very, very smart thing to do so you can know if your opponent's retreating their army or advancing without having to use too many scans. Well, what do you see as the next step for these two guys? What's going to happen is for Ryung, he wants to stabilize his bottom left and then make a move. His move's over on the right side. Oh, the Marines stemming forward. Holt trying to hold strong with those tanks. Going to retreat those Marines back to deal with that. We're seeing so many different um, uh, engagement points from both of these two players really spread across the map, which shows just the skill of these players. They're able to be in these different locations and truly identify where their opponent's weak spots are and, of course, attempt to try to take advantage. And then, uh, of course, we're seeing great reactions from both players as well. Ryung's goal here now, he's playing like a, a, a very slow, methodical game. His, his whole purpose is denying the fifth of Pulse. He's been sending dropships over along the yeah. right side, and now he's in an entire force, and that force is, is just really going to be there mostly to deny the fifth base of Pulse. And of course, if there's nothing there, might as well put some pressure on the fourth as well. You see Ryung sneaking around the right hand side of the map there with a, with a pretty sizable force. I feel like Ryung has a, a lot of momentum in this game. Again, Pult being very limited on those additional bases. He's going to react, pulling some tanks, pulling some Marines back. But if, if Ryung can get a position, he's going to be very happy. But I think Pult is going to be able to overwhelm this force, bringing pretty much his entire army over here. And he can afford to, to take a, a, a little bit of a cost efficient, inefficient trade there because he has a lot of resources. But Ryung, he's trying to take advantage of Pult potentially being out of position. Nope, just going to back up after killing his other tower. Sensor tower is so important in TVT. Very, very uh, key moves of Ryung by constantly picking those off. And as your opponent loses the central towers, all of a sudden drop play and big stim bio breaks become much easier to execute. All right. Both these guys still maneuvering all across the map here. Uh, just a line of blue and red going every which way. We have a double medevac drop heading to the top right hand side for Ryung. And again, no sensor tower in that area. So this might go on undetected. Oh, Ryung doing such a great job of continually denying the fifth base of Pult with drop plan pushes. So there's a couple turrets there from Pult, and he's just going to drop there. Hold on, Pult looks like he wants to be aggressive here at the top side of the map, setting the Marines forward, trying to take Ryung off guard. Where are Ryung's tanks? It looks like there's only one a little bit further back, and Pult, he's going to continue surging forward a little bit, but meanwhile, the drop is occurring in Pult's third, no, no, fourth base, but it is going to get cleaned up, so Pult doing a great job here with, uh, with this aggressiveness. Great moves by Paul, and now he's pushing into the, uh, I guess he called this the third base of Ryung. Ryung's defending, but Ryung's been taking a lot of bad trades, and now all of a sudden, yeah. he's out of money. That's, that's a great point. Pult is up in tanks, 13 to 10. And again, he's, he's taking advantage of that. He's slowly pressing his tanks forward. Ryung scrambling to add on more and more tanks to this composition. And I gotta say, I, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised by this, considering Ryung has been up in bases throughout, it seems, this entire game. Uh, but Pult is the one with the massive bank. Well, if you take a look at the units lost tab, you can see in all these engagements, oh, yeah. it pulled them in so much more cost efficient. 6,000 resources, more lost by Ryung. And now Pult has a really good position to basically control the movement of Ryung's forces. Ryung really has a difficult time getting to the, the top right side of the map now. All right, Pult 
in a great position, I think, outside of his opponent's third base. Also still has that that uh, that line set up on the middle left of uh, about four tanks and six marines. Uh, but Polk continuing to spew reinforcements across the map. His bank is getting ridiculous. He's going to stim forward once again, trying to, to take advantage again of a, of a Ryung that's that's potentially out of position, but realizing nothing is there, and he's going to back away. But, you know, Polk can afford to, to make those trades. He has the, the, the resource advantage. He has the economic advantage at this point in time. And, and if you're trading marines for tanks, you're going to be very happy as Polk. Ryung with another attempt at the 9 to 5th base. This has been his focus of the game the entire game. 16 Marines coming down. That's one dead command center. <laughs> a lot of mules were just dropped there too. Uh, Polk going to lift as fast as possible, try to back away. But uh, I don't know if he's going to save it. It is burning. Some Marines and uh, tanks coming forward here from Polt. And it's barely good at 150 still in the command center. So he is going to save the command center. Meanwhile, Ryung on the left-hand side of the map, he's able to clear up that, uh, that tank line that was existing before. So, um, you know, Ryung's going to be happy with, with how that went, I think. Ryung definitely over the last minute has made some big moves. Uh, we can see the units lost tab is, is, is still in Pult's favor. But if you look at the banks, now both players are maxed. And instead of sitting on 5k, 4k uh, that Pult was just about a minute ago, he's actually about half his, his previous bankroll. And Ryung is now starting to develop a bank of his own. Still not seeing any uh, any drastic he's transitions. Cutting, oh. He's cutting off Polt's army. This is what he needs. He's coming in from the back. He's not coming in from the left, though, but so, so Polt's just going to back away and let these tanks do their damage. I'd love to see Polt trying to send his squad up the left-hand side as well and really try to get the, 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 the biggest concave possible. But now... Oh, I thought there was a <laughs> <laughs> That would have been a mistake. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a huge flank from Messi. Ryung just trying to chip away at this uh, little force of Pulse, but he's got to be careful because that's not Pulse's entire army. Across the bottom, there's a giant force of Pulse moving around, and Ryung needs to defend that fifth base. He's repositioning now. Uh, Pulse scrambling to try to get into position here, but Ryung identifying what's going on, going to back up, set up some tanks there, so Pulse's going to have to find, or at least attempt to find, another entrance. Um, I'd like to see him try to sneak behind his opponent's expansions just like Ryung is doing. I think Ryung, you know, setting up these drops, uh, at least that drop at the top right hand side of the map, denying a lot of mining time there. But Polk going to stem forward with all of these Marines again, trying to take down those tanks, trying to get damage done with his tanks, done, uh, his tanks as well. Well, look at this, sending some tanks to this high ground here on the middle left. And that's a great position for Polk to have. It's going to be a very difficult position for Young to break. Polt has such a huge tank count. The one thing that's really working against Polt is, like you said, it, his, his top right base has been consistently denied and harassed by Young. So it, his mining isn't quite as good as Young's is. Polt now has uh, a great uh, line of tanks on his opponent's side of the map. Still trying to deal with these drops here from Young, but again, not having too lasting of an effect on this game. Ryung able to identify some tanks that do not have much anti-air supporting them. He's going to drop some Marines and start doing some damage to these tanks. Polt, where are your Marines? Oh, and Polt cannot afford to lose these units. With Oh, and again, another drop on, on the Marines on the high ground. Ryung is making these trades happen. Polt's only at 20 SCVs. He's killed almost his entire worker force. So replacing these units is a very big deal for Polt, whereas Ryung has uh, over double Polt's income so he can easily replace these Marine losses. Polt has like... Eight orbitals? Yes. Is, is Do you think that's enough to... I mean, I don't know it, the exact math, but like he, obviously... As he still like, has good good economy, right? but Ryung has massive economy because Ryung also has eight orbitals plus sure. almost 60 SCVs, whereas Pult's at 19. Yeah, and we have to remember, though, Pult's army is able to be much, much bigger. Ryung going to try to break on this right-hand side, but the Marines are there, the tanks are there as well, and that's not going to happen. So is this turning into a situation where... As weird as it sounds, Polt trying to limit his opponents to like five bases where while he takes six or something like that? That could be his goal. He's moving to command center up to take a sixth base, but he, he's, he's having a hard time remaxing out. Now, as these trades go on, Ryung can replace the units faster than Polt. So he wants these small trades. Uh, as long as the batters are small, Polt can't use his superior army size right now. Uh, Polt does oh. not want to lose that command center, but it is going to fall. Great heads up move there from Ryung, identifying what his opponent is trying to do. Um, and this game, this game is still so close. I, I can't tell you who's ahead. This game is really just all about, <laughs> I mean, I, I think right now Ryung is ahead. He's done such a great job of consistently denying Pult bases. Yeah. But Pult has a better position on the map right now. So right. it could still very easily go either way. 
And look at that. Paul oh, actually saying, you know what, Ryung, what you did back there, that was kind of cool. I'm going to do the same I'm gonna do the same thing, sending a lot of Marines to the south side of the map. This time, though, Ryung sending some army here to try to defend against this. That's a lot of Marines, though, here from Polk. Going to try to split those up, but Ryung is going to have enough to, to fend that off. That's a big win for Ryung. It was so important he won that battle because now he can take that sixth base. And, uh, and again, it was a small trade. Maybe it was roughly even. Maybe Ryung got a small advantage, but he can replace his units easier than Polk can. And also sending those Marines from before that denied the sixth towards that fifth base. It is a planetary fortress, so he has to find a good angle to engage that. Um, but, but again, Ryung doing a great job with these counterattacks. And, and Paul to, uh, trying to do the same thing, but it seems like Shri Young is, is on top of, of fending off those attempts from Paul to uh, deny those additional expansions. You know, Paul has this contained, but Young has been able to find a way to get around it and still take that bottom base. Oh, Paul trying to be as relentless as possible here, sending some more Marines forward. He's just go, go, go. He's trying to get this aggression done, but Young again, holding strong each and every time, and Paul is having a hard time trying to break his opponent. I'd love to see him try to get in a position where he can kind of cut off reinforcements of his opponent. He's kind of getting there, so he can start assaulting those bottom bases, and uh, it'll be much harder for Ring to, to, again, reinforce, Ryung to, to reinforce those locations. If Polk can somehow elevate a couple tanks onto that watchtower at the bottom oh, left, yeah. that would be a huge move to really isolate that bottom base. But Ryung, knowing the bottom base is vulnerable, has moved the force there to help reinforce that location. Yeah, Ryung making like a, a C with it, with his uh, army, and Polt is just... Actually, he's going to cut Polt's... Oh, no, his, uh, his marine could force go could... for a flank here. Yeah, or, or at least just cut off the, the Polt's army and isolate it. Yeah. It, it seems like Polt is, is a little bit worried of... Uh, of moving around. He's actually going for a counterattack. Nope, Teach Tank's going to push him back. There's also some rocks there. Oh my god, Polk going to try to cut him off. He does have more Marines in this composition, and I think he's going to be successful. Ryung losing a lot of Marines there. Oh, and all the medevacs, or not all, but a good chunk of the medevacs. That was a big win for uh, for Polk. Oh, he's going to go straight to the base at the bottom. Two tanks are gone. This planetary fortress is going to be uh, a campfire for these SCVs as they Huddle get in a position to repair them. <laughs> Now, if, if Polk can isolate that planter and bring up a few tanks, he can I'd send some Marines to the back. Yeah, he can take it. it out. Yeah, he actually, that would be a, a really good move as well. But he's actually going to go straight for this other base, putting a couple Marines behind that. Of course, that base isn't quite as important. It's, it's mostly mined out. Sure. Okay, he's going to scan that. And. Yes. Gosh, I'm got to send some Marines to oh, sneak back there. But this is a great position for Polk. I mean, that, that one engagement where he's able to, to cut off Ryung's reinforcements, it was brilliant. And now he's going to charge forward with all of these Marines trying to DPS down this planetary before the SCVs can repair it. And he is going to be successful. The planetary goes down. Goodbye, SCVs. And now Ryung is barely mining. He only has one mining base, and there's only a few crystals at that 12 o'clock location. He's desperately trying to make a break out of this contain. He has to do something because five base to five base, Polt is going to win. He's been much more cost efficient in this game. And in fact, Ryung's fifth base looks like it might fall as well. Uh, the SCV's trying to repair. It's not going to work. And Polt cleaning up all of the, uh, the planetary fortress. And I thought he was going to go for the SCVs, but no, he's running right to the north. The tanks are vulnerable. Taking out one, two tanks, but going to back away. But now he has this position here. Um, just, again, preventing Ryung from taking a fort. But now the map seems like it's kind of Kind of like transitioning a little bit as far as Ryung now might take the base at the the one o'clock location and just be okay with Pulp being where he is. You see how the the, the, the map is kind of switching it from Ryung taking the left side to now Ryung taking the top, maybe. <laughs> Ryung's, I mean, he has to take the top. I don't know if he can defend. He's got a substantially smaller army than Pulp. Yeah. Uh, and Pulp's still mining. Ryung is, is basically not mining anymore. He's there's zero income, so he can't even max out. He's desperately trying to take that top right base, like you said, but. It's going to be very difficult to defend that without using his entire force. So he parks his entire uh, siege tank army there. What's going to stop Paul from just going straight into his main and killing all his production? That's a great point. It's a race to see who can get a position here. First, Ryung sending a lot of tanks to that location. Uh, a lot of Marines there as well. I mean, if we're talking about what Ryung has back at home, he has like five tanks, five Marines. But if Paul really tries to break that location, I, I think it's definitely possible. So Ryung, as you said, has to be very careful. Oh, Paul trying to take the watchtower, but <laughs> that's kind of a, a DMZ zone right there. Both players' tanks overlooking that location. Ryung, uh, he needs to really defend this base. He's sending most of his Marines back to the bottom left. I think he, he wants to either break that tank force Paul has there, or perhaps even deny the bottom left base from Paul. It's such a tricky decision you have to make. Do, do you defend this this location? What's that? 
I, I, yeah, well, I, I just saw that Pult scanned the top right. Yeah. Uh, saw that there was no Marines in army, and now he's moving his army back. Oh, Ryan going to clean up this force here from Pult. Pult needs to take advantage. He needs to uh, make up for losing that army, and he's getting a great position in between Ryan's main set of bases and the base that he's trying to set up, and that might be a very key location for Pult to hold. Oh, Pult might just walk out. He could take this base out. It's just a plantary. The Marines are very hurt, though. The plantary is going to get a couple kills. Yeah, but eventually going to take that guy out. SCB's vulnerable as well. Ryung trying to send some tanks back in the high ground. And Pult is kind of trapped in that location up there because he can't really retreat. So he's going to go for it, stimming forward with the Marines, targeting down the tanks. But he's going to lose most of his force to retreat as fast as possible. Of course, he couldn't retreat out of that location until he killed those tanks because tanks had position on him. So pretty heads up move there from Pult. And now he's up 176, 189 till 105 in supply. Ryung just hasn't been able to replace his army like, like Pult has. And Pult is, of course, oh. up to six bases right now. Ryung is only on four. Oh, what a game this is. Approaching the 45 minute mark of this game, but Pult looking like he is in complete control, sending forward more Marines and more tanks right towards his opponent's natural expansion, right towards his opponent's main. More importantly, his opponent's production. If you can isolate your opponent's production in TVT and you have your production going fine back home, you're going to be a very happy camper. How oh, Ryung's going to try to break this with no tanks of his own. The Marines are being shredded. Gosh, Ryung getting shredded up hard. There's the GG. Pult takes it. But that <laughs> that certainly was not easy for Mr. Pult. Here I thought we were going to have a short day <laughs> with, with only three players in the group. And Pult and Ryung are like, you know what? We're both so good at this game. We're going to go 40 minutes completely even. And then... Um, and then, and then one of us is finally going to win. <laughs> uh, definitely taking the time, being very patient throughout that game. What do you think was the the point, the the point of momentum shift, where where Pult just took command? So right there, as you just saw, when when he took out both these bottom left planetary fortresses, that cut off all of Ryung's economy, and yes. that pretty much decided the game. But throughout the game, one thing that Pult did better than Ryung, which is why he got the advantage to take out those planetary fortresses, was really just he was so good at the marine tank engagements. Anytime he, he saw an opening, he would move his marines forward and pick off tanks and run yes. back. And he was always trading marines for tanks. And so in the end, he had like twice the tank count of Young. All right, guys, Pult taking a, a very back and forth, very entertaining TBT there, a matchup all about positioning when you're going Marine Tank. Very awesome stuff, very awesome play displayed by both of these two players. But this is a best of three. Pult, he's one win away from advancing to the winner's match for Young. He can still win two in a row, guys. Stay tuned. Game two. Coming up.